Microsoft 365 Copilot. Actually, what I'm going to start with is what is Copilot because it feels like every other week Microsoft's announcing yet another Copilot. So, what is Copilot? Copilot is intended to be this personal assistant that can help you with really complex tasks. And every Copilot is built on the same foundational platform that uses a natural language interface to interact with and it's built on these large language models so it can really help with those complex tasks. And the benefit behind that, and obviously we've opened it up to developers to build their own co-pilots, is that every time those large language models are improved, every co-pilot will benefit from that. Okay, so everyone is benefiting from the, the uh, you know, the investments and the, the billions of pounds that are being put behind companies like OpenAI um, and Microsoft. And obviously, our large language model that we use for Copilot sits in Azure. And the data that is put into our large, large language models is not shared out into the public. So we have a Copilot for every one of our cloud experiences. And if you were to dig deeper into these, and I'm not going to go through this slide, but it is here just to demonstrate how many co-pilots we have launched in the last um, <coughs> few months. But they're designed to help you, as I said, do the complex tasks, but really get the value out of the products, okay? Because most of us are probably only using 10, 20% of the apps that we're using, you know, Word, Excel, PowerPoint. And Copilot will really help us unlock a lot more of those features that we've got and that we're paying for and really realize the value from our products. So that's Copilot as a general concept and a general platform. So Microsoft 365 Copilot. Obviously, what we know here, um, and if you haven't seen this, this these um, stats are from our Work Trend Index. We know that 64% of employees who responded to this search are really struggling with energy, right? They're struggling to find the time to do their job. There's just too many chats, too many emails. Was that in a Teams meeting? Was that sent to me on an email? Was it sent personally? And people are just getting bogged down with that drudgery of finding information, finding content. And as a result of that, they're struggling to innovate and strategically think. And management are starting to notice that. They're starting to say that innovation is not happening as fast as it used to. You know, productivity is slowing down. But as a result of all of that, actually, this has opened up everyone's view that AI can really help drive more productivity. So we know that 70% of those employees that responded are actually open to using AI in their workplace. And what are they wanting AI to do? Okay, so it's not just about automation and, and those monotonous tasks, but it's help finding those answers, right? We all know that we've, we can recall something, but we just can't remember where it is, and you're searching, and it's just wasting so much time. Summarizing meetings and actions, we're all in so many meetings these days, really helping with that creativity and that content creation and things like that, as well as, you know, admin tasks, planning the day, and some of that analytical work. So at Inspire, we announced Bing Enterprise. Bing Enterprise is available now. It's available on every M365 tenant. And as of this month, we have switched it on on every tenant. So now an admin has to go in and switch this off if they don't want this. right? And Bing Enterprise is basically bringing Bing Chat, so that natural language interface, into a safe company environment. So what's really important with the Bing Enterprise, right, is that you access it using your Azure Active Directory, and therefore it's locked down to your company. So the data, we don't save it. Once you've had that chat and you've closed that chat down, there's no way to get that back. That's gone. It's not saved anywhere. We don't use it. We don't see it, right? There's no way for us to access that. And we don't use that data to train those large language models, right? What happens in that Bing Enterprise chat stays in that chat. So I'm just going to give you an example of how Bing Chat Enterprise and how you can tell if you've got it and you're using the enterprise. And then we'll just compare that then with how Bing Enterprise compares with Microsoft 365 Copilot. 
When you're logged into Bing with your work account, Bing Chat Enterprise is enabled. You can ask it to create messaging for a new product and safely include sensitive business data, such as the product specs and pricing. With each response, you are reminded that your personal and company data is protected, and none of your prompts are stored by Microsoft or used to train the underlying model. You can even ask it to help with a competitive analysis. It will create a table with your product specs alongside competitors' products for easy comparison. This puts you so much further ahead. And look, we've had some great conversations with people of how they're using this in their everyday sort of flow of work. Um, I was chatting to someone yesterday who was reviewing a ton of CVs. He had Bing Enterprise open on one screen, he had the CVs on the other, and he was chucking the content in and asking it to summarize um, and the spot anomalies in the CVs. And again, you know, that data is safe. It's not going to be shared out into the wider internet. We've all ho heard those sort of horror stories of where, a, you know, an MD s shared something really sent or used uh, chat GBT to share something really sensitive. This isn't going to happen, so you can use it in your day-to-day -day flow of work. But how does that then compare to Microsoft 365 Copilot? Because actually Bing Enterprise is now included. You don't pay any extra for that. But obviously, we announced at Inspire, Copilot license is going to be $30 per user. OK, and you have to have the Microsoft 365 product SKU, and that's either the Enterprise E3 or the E5, or Business Standard or Business Premium. So there's an opportunity here to make sure that the customers are moved onto Microsoft 365. But what's the difference here is that it's personalized to you. So Copilot uses the Microsoft Graph to ground the data in what you're doing. Who are you chatting to? Who are you emailing with? What documents are you accessing? What projects are you working on? And then you couple that with something called Symantec Index, which again is something that we're only bringing to Microsoft 365 SKUs and not Office 365. Um, which helps ground that data. And actually, I've got a little slide on it in a little bit that helps um, explain that a little bit more. And it helps you in the apps you use every day, so whether that's Teams, Excel, etc. So the next video I'm going to show you just will help you understand the difference between Bing Enterprise and Copilot and how this really does personalize it to you. You can start by asking Copilot to summarize all your recent customer interactions, meetings, content you've shared, any issues, and deliverables. Copilot works across your calendar, emails, chats, documents, and meetings to find all the pertinent information. Now you've got a concise summary, complete with citations and sources. You can hover over names, quotes, and file names to verify information or find out more. Now you know product lead times are likely to come up. So you ask Copilot to help you prepare all the details. Copilot synthesizes everything you need so you can feel prepared. And so the difference that you can see there is that Copilot is using that Microsoft graph to ground it in what you're doing, who you're talking to, and really make that personal to you and help you achieve much more complex things. So this chart here just quickly shows you the difference. So you've got Bing Chat, which is an open um, chat. If anything you share on that would be shared in the inter across the internet. Bing Chat Enterprise is where your commercial data is protected, so that is not shared outside of your organization's perimeter. And then obviously Copilot that starts to build on those enterprise security, privacy and compliance, as well as using the Microsoft Graph, and then the apps that you use every day. So the foundations of Copilot. This is a great opportunity to get customers introduced to generative AI because Microsoft has done most of the work here. If you think about the Azure Open AI, customers are going to have to really think about these principles. But when you move to Copilot, right, this is a SaaS finished solution. We've built that product on these principles already. So we've already built in that enterprise security, compliance, and privacy that works on those permission models within a Microsoft 365 tenant. It will inherit 
inherit those tenant um, policies and uh, that have been set up. And it will work on either tenant level, so in, um, companies can. Uh, so sorry, if you've got multiple tenants within a company, then we're only going to work within that one tenant. Okay, so that's an opportunity there for you to think about companies that have multi tenants. It's going to work on group access and group policies, and then it's going to work on individual levels. Okay, so individual access to documents, SharePoints, and things like that. And then we've built that on our responsible AI principles of what we build most of our um, AI on. Um, fairness, reliability and safety, privacy and security, inclusiveness, transparency and accountability. So these are all built in at the, into the product as we design and build these. Uh, so I'm not technical, but I did want to put in um, about Semantic <coughs> Index because it's starting to roll out to Microsoft 365 tenants. We'll start with the enterprise SKUs first and then we will bring them to business standard and business premium. But Semantic Index is that next stage in search. Okay, So at the moment, if you did a search or something, you're going to use keywords. But what Semantic Index starts to do is add context to that. Okay, So it's going to start knowing that Project X is managed by Sue Smith, and we'll start to look at things that Sue Smith is working on. It will start to work out that, you know, Project X is actually nicknamed PX within the organization and start to recognize organization acronyms, which, you know, is great for Microsoft as we love those. We're going to start to understand that actually if we start talking about Tesla, what we going to be looking for is actually more information about electric cars because it's going to know that Tesla electric cars are all start the same thing. So it starts to bring much more context to the search um, and will deliver much more relevant prompts and details. But these, these tools are going to start to learn. So they're not going to, once you start using Copilot, those first few times you use it, it's not going to have this context yet and it's going to gradually learn and get better and better as you use it. And I guess what you really want to know is what are the um, sort of partner opportunities around Copilot. So we've broken it down into four key areas where we think there's opportunity for partners to build services. And if we start with that beginning bit around working with a customer to advise them around those AI services, there's the AI transformation all up. And obviously, Copilot could be part of that conversation. But if we start to dig down into Copilot more specifically, what are we starting to learn as we have our conversations with these early access customers? We're starting to understand that we need to help them identify those personas within an organization that are going to benefit the most from having co-pilot. We're going to need to start work working with them to identify what value those personas are going to get. So if it's someone finance, is it going to be much more around the analytical stuff? If it's management or senior leadership, is it going to be much more around those pulling together that information and those connections of who, you know, talking to multiple people and that information gathering. Is it creativity? Is that going to help the marketing department more and things like that? So it's really working with a customer to identify who those personas are and that value realization that they're going to get from this. And then you could bring in things like Viva Insights and Glint. And I just pop there that we've got a bundle um, at the moment. Insight and Glint is um, $6. There's an opportunity here to use things like Viva Insight to identify teams that may be overworking, that actually bringing in Copilot and offering them that kind of personal assistant is going to help reduce that uh, extra hours that they're working that could then have an impact on you know, uh, employees leaving. It's going to help boost um, morale and things like that. So using Glint and Viva Insights can really help you sort of identify those teams and then help to measure that impact. Um, and then really important to start thinking about, you know, how can Copilot help those with accessibility needs? Um, and that was, um, not just Microsoft 365 Copilot, but Windows Copilot and things like that, that can really help those that have those accessibility requirements. So that's on the advisory side, and that's about talking before the customers have purchased. And then the second stage is then, if the customer is really interested, is looking at their Microsoft 365 environment and are they optimized for Copilot? Because it's actually, it isn't going to work straight out of the box if they haven't optimized their environment for, 
for Copilot. So this is firstly, you know, they've got to be on Microsoft 365. Um, it will not work with Office 365 plus add-ons, semantic index, and Bing Enterprise are only available on Microsoft 365 platform that brings that all together. Customers have to be using the workloads that Copilot builds on. So they've got to be using Teams, OK? So if they're using you know, other third parties, it's not going to be able to access that data. It's only going to be able to access the Microsoft 365 apps that are pulled through the graph. They've got to be using SharePoint. Documents saved on a hard drive on someone's laptop is not going to get surfaced, and it's not going to be accessed as part of that graph. It's got to be using their OneDrive. They've got to be using SharePoint. You've got to be using Azure Active Directory, OK? So that permissions model really depends on that. So they have to have Azure Active Directory switched on and in tune. Um, existing customers to get their document classification and management policies set up. A lot of organizations don't have this set up or have it set up correctly. Um, you know, even internally, I'll give you an example. I did a, a search as soon as I found out about semantic indexing. I wanted to do a search to see how powerful it was. We had it rolled out internally. I accessed really sensitive PR documents because these documents hadn't been classified. OK, they must have seen me access that document because two days later that was locked down and I couldn't access it. But it's really important that you know, we start to talk about that and get customers thinking about that. And there's an opportunity here for you to be offering those advisory services as well as looking at like, things like purview, et cetera. And you can think about, you know, is there opportunity to upsell to those additional suites, E5, or bring in things like um, you know, extra compliance and purview and things like that. Um, and then I think from a, a partner point of view, definitely get to understand how that semantic index and that graph works. Because if you can understand how that works, then your advisory role to those customers um, really help them understand how to get their data set up and structured correctly so that they get the best out of Copilot. Then once they've thought about that and they're thinking about rolling out Copilot, it's really then about that user adoption and training. And this is going to be a whole different way for people to work, OK? Writing prompts and getting what you need out of a prompt is going to be a, a skill that people are going to start having to learn. And I think you know, the, the more that you can pull that together and help customers understand and employees understand that. And then other things like ensuring that um, employees understand that Copilot isn't an automation tool. It's not here to do their job for them. Okay, they have to check the accuracy. Copilot will cite where documents have come from. It will give them the links. You saw that demo that is telling you where it's pulling the information from. It is down to that employee. That employee has that liability and that responsibility to check that work. You know, if you had your own personal assistant. You would not let them just do the work and send it out. You would always check their work. Same with Copilot, right? And it will, it will learn and it will get better. As I said, it will start to understand your graph better and it will start to understand that semantic indexing better. But it still has to be checked. And if you think about some of the scenarios here, you know, a salesperson using Copilot uses it to generate a follow-up email after their conversation with their customers. They don't bother checking it. Copilot has been you know, accurate so far. It sends that follow-up email out, and it's picked up an incorrect price, you know, a document that versioning, versioning hadn't been set up properly, and it's picked up an old price, etc. That liability lies with that employee of checking that. And this could even involve things like updating HR policies, et cetera, to bring that into it. Um, and also, you know, making sure uh, employees understand how to, what the policies are around, you know, classification. When should I set something highly confidential? When do I need to, you know, make sure something's password protected and things like that? Or when can it be a general document that other people can access? Because with as we roll this out, more and more people will be accessing other documents. So it's really important that they understand what that classification is and that you help those customers design those policies. 
Um, and then you can bring in things like internal champs, um, centers of excel excellence, um, using things like Viva employee comms and connections to help land this adoption and training. And then finally, more of that long-term view and, and kind of relates back to what Darren was talking about is how you start to build these co-pilot extensions and things like that, that, you know, if you start to monetize, you can put them into the marketplace and things like that. There's a lot of opportunity there. I think, you know, as customers start to roll out co-pilot, they'll recognize that actually having that third party data source pulled in as an extension into co-pilot will really help with our you know, employees access that information or, or bring that in. So, you know, there's ongoing opportunity here. But a really big part, and I know everyone's going to ask when GA is, um, I would just say it's, it's going to be within the next six months for sure. Um, but I can't put a date on that. There's a lot of work that you can get going on now and a lot of work that you can do with customers to get them AI ready and get them co-pilot ready. So it's not just about waiting for co-pilot to land. Have the conversations now about with your customers about are they going to be ready? And actually, I would say even if they're not considering co-pilot, the fact that Symantec Index is going to be coming to most M3, or almost all M365 tenants, right? There's opportunity around that document classification because that will start to open that up, that everyone will start to be accessing other people's documents and things like that. And, and I tell you what, it's quite spooky when you find a load of people in the document you created because you kept that as a, as a general access. Um, so, you know, there's, there's huge amounts of service opportunities here for partners. Um, and then if I talk about, you know, and I know Nathan's going to talk about the Cloud Partner Programme, there's some of the uh, sort of kind of levers that we would say that you can use. Um, around that advisory bit, it's a little bit like we've got the Viva Insights pilot if, if you know you want to access that. Certainly Bytes can access that and perhaps deliver that on your behalf if you haven't quite got those capabilities for things like that. Um, around the deployment, then obviously we've got the um, online services usage incentive. So that's um, open to CSP and enterprise customers if you're helping to drive those workloads. At the moment, uh, obviously, we've got some changes happening on the 1st of October with the, the workloads that we'll pay out on, on usage for. And we've got what was announced at Inspire, which is the CSP Sales Accelerator. So this will help you identify those customers that are you know, right for that upsell path or where you actually need to go back in and start working with because they're not using those. Um, workloads and actually Copilot and that AI piece gives you a great opportunity to revisit those customers and have a conversation around, you know, can we help you get AI ready because you're not using these workloads and you'll need them if you really want to sort of benefit from the use of these. Um, and again, on the user adoption, we've got the um, usage incentives. And then finally, as we go into that Copilot plugins and all that extensions, then we've got the ISV success program. Uh, then lastly, obviously I thought that this would be a really useful slide for you to understand what are the sort of minimum requirements that we say to have um, a successful rollout of Copilot. And the first one I obviously spoke about, they've got to be on E3, E5, business standard or business premium. They've got to have um, AOD or what's now called ENTRA turned on and rolled out. Um, using OneDrive again and, and using links because if you, if you they're just attaching a, a document to an email, it's not going to surface as well in the Microsoft Graph than if they were attaching a link to a document. So it's thinking about how they use things like that. Um, using the new Outlook, I've used, I'm using it. There's still some you know improvements to be made, but. You know, they've got to be using things like this, the Microsoft 365 apps. Teams, obviously, is, is pretty crucial if they want to be able to be pulling together information around, you know, projects, what's the latest, who's saying what, and things like that. Loop, if you want Loop um, to be included as part of that, then, yeah, you need to have that switched on. Um, and then, as I said, you know, having those um, apps and using those apps to get the best results. Mm -hmm.